But yeah. That being said. Okay. Uh, welcome to the Effin Movie Podcast. I'm your host, <laughs> Sherry. And uh, this is this is Kelly. This is Joanne. This yep. is Mason. Yeah. I knew, <laughs> I knew I was gonna get a mention. Um, and based on my attire, I am your co host today because I am matching so our bitch. main host today. <laughs> Quit Robert shopping Ray. at the same place as I shop. <laughs> Tell you, Gap is a wonderful place. I don't even shop at Gap. <laughs> Wait, is it Old Navy? It's always Old Navy. Ah, same thing. Yeah. Same company. Anyway, nah. is it? Uh, yeah, you probably tuned in to 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 watch the movie that's the title of this episode on YouTube. Mason, I mean, sorry, Nathan. What movie is that? <laughs> Mandy. Mandy. It's a it's a lovely little coming of age story of this young girl. I don't think it's that at all. <laughs> oh, did you all not watch? What What did you all watch? <laughs> We watched the Nick Cage. Yeah. <laughs> what? I uh, I don't. I'm not following this joke. <laughs> they, man, he's definitely a, a child kid movie. That's like coming. Mean, it's very different. Of the same sure, movie, but don't worry about it. Go Google the other Mandy. <laughs> yeah. To see where that joke is. Anyway. No, yeah. Th- so this we're... this this is definitely a movie with Nick Cage in it. Yeah. It is. Um, <laughs> very. It's very Nick Cage Ford. Um, boy, is it interesting. It's uh, like a horror almost but you don't really feel that horrified um it's a revenge story yeah for the second half and it's a revenge story that i don't know if y'all remember whenever i showed you all the trailer to this i feel like the trailer implied that mandy the girlfriend of nick cage was kidnapped and yeah. he was trying to get her back yeah yeah not that she was killed in front of him set on fire and then he was just on a pure revenge trip yeah they uh they definitely gave you the old Switcheroo well, in, the, in the trailer. The trailer too. also just kind of misled you, period. Just oh, because, so like, much. like, like there were some cool shots in the trailer with like the the frames and everything, but the movie was purely that, like, yes. all over it. And then at the very sixty-seven percent of the way through, it flipped a complete switch and turned on its own head, mm. and was just like a roller coaster. Yeah. So this movie is a wild ride and quite long like it sits on so many scenes for such a long time like we already know this is going to be called fat by everybody <laughs> but just to kind of quickly go over this story because it's a very simple story yeah nick cage and his girlfriend live in the woods there's a cult of what nick cage calls jesus freaks mm-hmm. that um it's basically like a just your standard religious cult kind of thing uh, they're driving along one day, see Mandy walking down the road, and the leader of the cult decides that he needs her. Um, cue them summoning uh, demonic hell bikers to help them capture her for no reason I can understand. Because <laughs> they had nothing was better Nick going Cage on. <laughs> so dangerous that they needed these people to do this? I don't like. They were just sleeping. They were just sleeping, and then they decided to summon these people. It's just two people in a house. Why do you, Why do you need hell demon yeah. bikers? Anyway, you're taking one of them. Spiky, so. spiky demon. Yeah, very bikers. spiky. Yeah, you wouldn't um, hug him. <laughs> so yeah, they they, they show allowed. up. They tie Nick up. Um, there's this weird drug scene where they put drugs in her eyes and then have her stung by a wasp mm-hmm. to trip her out. And uh, Jesus freak cult leader tries to seduce her. She just laughs at him. He gets upset. They burn her alive in front of Nick Cage, who gets angry about that and gathers his tools. Shows that makes he an axe. Yeah, literally <laughs> makes dude, a hole. Dude is a blacksmith apparently. <laughs> he's a like, logger. He's a logger. Then he's a blacksmith. But yeah. he's a blacksmith, yes. and he also has a crossbow that's called what? What was it called? The destroyer. The, the grim. Mm. It was like the reaper or the. I don't it was, no, well, he, it wasn't his. He got it from somebody. Yeah, he got it from. Well, the, I, no, it was a, his that oh, he, he gave it to him, yeah, and yeah, he, he had picked back. it back right, up right, from right. him. Um, so yeah, it's like it seems like this guy has done some stuff in the past or is like somehow way more proficient than it feels like he should be. Um, and then he just goes on a tear, just hunting down the demon bikers, killing them, snorting their own drugs, yeah. chasing down the Jesus freaks, murdering them, um, being offered a BJ at the end and just crushing a guy's skull. Which it's... I think was in poor taste. He should have got the BJ before he got the skull. <laughs> Man, this was a wild movie, and there's so much that happens in between. But that's that's the story. Yeah. Honestly, 
I would disagree on the part that there's a lot going on because I do not think so. There are two very distinct, very separate halves of this movie that mm-hmm. have, I would say, n- nothing going on in the sense that like they're very one note. The first half of the movie is just like, these are your characters. We're going to drag it out as long as possible. The next half is, this is a murder porn. We're going to drag it out as long as possible. And then the movie just sort of ends. And that's it. This this movie had nothing in it for me. It was just so long. You all talked about Quentin Tarantino movies, their <laughs> scenes dragging on longer than they needed to. Holy crap, this movie does that in spades. Mm. Like, there's oh, yeah. so many, like, shots where it's just, like, maybe them walking in slow motion or, like, just nothing happening. And then it's just, oh, it just lasts on the scene for an eternity. <laughs> And just wasted my time. Yeah, and that is one of the number one things this I hate in any could movie. Have easily been an hour twenty. Yeah. Yes. Very hour like at, at that point, I think it would have been a much better movie. Mm-hmm. But it wastes forty minutes of your time. It was two hours and one minute, evidently. Yeah. One minute too long. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Plus one extra hour. But, on I mean, I, I do got to say, I feel like there was a lot that happened that just sticks out to me. Like, so many scenes of this movie, I feel like, are going to be pretty memorable. In the like, first half or the second half? The second half. Yeah, I was about to say, because the first half, I'm like, all right, Board, dream, yeah. what looks like dream sequences, and the guy hangs huge dong, and then, that's, and then there's a burning. And then the second half... He definitely does. He st- hang huge dong. Yeah, it's ma- it's huge. It's is it not? It's pretty big. I don't remember it. I, I remember is, are the we cult leader. About the leader yeah. of the cult. Yeah. Oh, no. No, it was not. Yeah, like it was not Vigo Mortensen. Yeah, yeah, it was not. Well, no, I mean like it's that. not Vigo. Vigo. <laughs> I mean, Vigo makes me blush. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, this guy, <laughs> anyway, yeah. So, but, yeah. like, there's the inducing her with a drug and the wasp thing, yeah, the wasp and like thing. the little thing where she's reading a book, sitting at the counter. Apparently, she works at a convenience store. There's little things in the beginning, but none of them are very important. It's really all about just the, the murder porn, yeah. which is the latter half of this movie. It's, it's and like that's where there's so many like crazy scenes that just stick with you it's like 75 percent taken except that mandy's dead Mm -hmm. and then like 25 percent crank except it's nicholas cage instead of (laughs) uh what's a a good call that's that's kind of similar because like once he just tips over that pot is all over the floor right like he's yeah the fact that he like just snorts a whole bunch of the crazy drugs the fact that he even does that i was just like why not (laughs) (laughs) Um, like he just looks down, just like <gasps> he grabs some and just so goes for it. We talk about like those panning shots and like the the weird like the ones that they just kind of hesitate on for a long time. Mm-hmm. I actually really like those, but not in that quantity. Yeah, like the dusty like th- basically every light bulb that was used on this film was red. It was it was coated in red, mm-hmm. and everything was either red or kind of bluish. So the director for this has mm-hmm. a trademark on mm-hmm. shooting lights directly into the camera lens to get those kind of effects. Apparently, mm-hmm. that's yeah. cool. that's a piece of trivia that I read about I, this. I, I appreciate though a lot of those panning shots just from like they they went on way too long. Yeah. For instance, one it was like this like um like a a dirt path and then they had rustled up some dirt and like the light from behind it and then they showed like a van coming through it mm-hmm. those are cool but the amount that they did it was insane yeah so stupid like that's what kind of that in the first hour because the first hour is so i mean for lack of a better word it's just really boring like if if they had done something to flesh mandy out as a character to make me care oh, that she gosh, died then, yeah. then maybe that hour would have been worth it but it felt like they just wanted to spend time making you feel like you were watching a psychedelic dream movie for the first hour. Mm-hmm. And they still kind of wanted you to do that the second half, but so much action is going on that it just, it doesn't feel right. Like, the that style of shooting works for the first half of the movie, but if you try to apply it to the second half, it totally is supposed to be, like, more calm and psychedelic thinking, but at this point, he's just ripping people <laughs> apart and chainsaw fighting. They fight with <laughs> chainsaws! Oh, oh man. I, I love Why? Which I admittedly <laughs> was like, so this is pretty fun. Funny. I do yeah. him, like, Here's... Oh, I'm gonna set my axe down and pick this chainsaw up, and he's just revving it, walking towards that guy, and he just turns to him and it's just like, oh, <laughs> chainsaw, huh? <laughs> Bigger like, chainsaw! How about, how about a four times <laughs> the size of a normal chainsaw? So yeah. I'm gonna suggest something, uh-huh. and I think that we'll probably agree was it that those scenes were just so incredible or was it because we had been watching trash mm. up until that point that made the chainsaw scene, the living room scene, the kitchen scene, the bathroom scene, 
all of those scenes just incredible. No, yeah, it's it. Because I, I liked up until then. I liked the scenes at the end, but I think a lot of it was because there was nothing going on up until then. You know what's weird is that for me, I think it's weird that like the pacing on the second half of the movie, he starts by killing like the three biker dudes and then goes to the religious cult thing because it feels like there's no. Like, his battles are going to be with those three yeah, dudes. Yeah, the, they, they seem bad. Right, the culty church people, they they, well, they were fodder. Like, four, yeah. It was four yeah. dudes. Actually. Like Yeah, like four biker yeah. dudes, Because right? he, he takes the one out as oh, they're yeah. driving there, and then and there's... Then... He gets captured. And then he throws that guy in the wall, yeah. and then there's the guy in the living room, and then there's the guy there's he has the long the extra room. fight with, right? Now... I don't know, maybe it's the video game part of my brain where I'm like, why did you just give me four bosses and now I'm just Grand Theft Autoing the rest of everybody else? Like, they should have been sprinkled out or been in one area where he's like, bumps into one, kills it, like, talks to a church person, bumps into another, don't go into a church person. But this one was like, here's all the fights that are actually going to be fights, and then I guess here's a chainsaw fight from this one guy in the church crowd, and then that's pretty much it. Yeah, like, like the, that whole church group is screwed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, so screwed. Well, and he's he, covered in blood at that point. He's yeah. covered in blood. He's blood also, busted. like, used the drug that made these yeah. bikers think that they were demons. Uh -huh. Because that's the other thing, too, is, like, it kind of, at the beginning, tries uh. to make you think that they're, like, some kind of demonic creatures that mm -hmm. are being summoned, and that these, this, like... Jesus Freak cult has all kinds of demonic artifacts and stuff, like that dagger that they stab him with, yeah. and they're just like, oh, this is a dagger from... I forget exactly where they said it was from, but it's actually a reference to a demon in D&D &D that is mm -hmm. the lord of one of the nine hells or something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's all like supposed to make you think, like, oh, this is going to be like some weird supernatural stuff. But no, it's just oh. people on drugs and like really <laughs> messed up. Yeah, um, like, I love that they they even said they're like, yeah, the, the, essentially those guys just cook the drugs like they're chemists, and they cooked, like, a really spicy thing of, like, LSD, and those guys mm -hmm. have not been the same sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, exactly they, they said, they're yeah. Solomon yeah, yeah. from, it's kind of a yeah. funny story, but, like, whatever, he Bad had, news. like, he had a hundred acid tabs, <laughs> and then, like, they got, like, two of whatever Solomon <laughs> took, <laughs> but instead of just being really sensitive, they're just crazy, like, <laughs> they're just demons now at that point. And, see, I was... Like, we keep talking about the second half of this movie, like, it's, yeah. like, great cinema. Well, I'm, okay, uh, let me, let me, let me calm that down. Yeah. We, let, like, we're talking about the second half, like, it's good cinema. Like, it's good movie. Uh, you all been talking about, like, it's pretty good. And while I was watching, I was like, okay, let me, like, pause it. Like, actually pause it for a second and think, like, is this actually good cinema? Or is saying. Or is it just triggering that primal, like, id part of my psyche? <laughs> just because there's blood and guts and stuff flying on the screen. And once I realized that, like, it's not, like, good movie making, it's just, it's just blood. Like, it's just, like, I'll show, I could show this to a caveman from 5000 BC or something, and they'd be like, oh, yeah, oh, caveman, yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> Nicholas Cage, yeah, yeah. And, and I was like, all right, I'm checked out. There's nothing more that this movie has to offer to me oh, besides yeah. it's... gratuitous violence mm -hmm. and at that point, Here's I was the thing, more it's than a checked slasher out. Flick You're correct. Point. This is a bad movie, but we're still going to talk about it. Yeah. No, I'm not saying it's going to talk about it. I'm just saying like yeah. there's a distinction I think that needs to be made between like this being a good movie and just like it's just. It so I think the, gratuitous. Right, but I think the contrary point to that is if we're talking about this and what are we not talking about, and what we're not talking about is really not a whole lot, and I think that's the problem, right? So there's every, nothing to chew on. Everything that's not action is Mandy. Kinda. And even then, it's, like, not even really Mandy. I feel like they spend more time on, on the cult than they even spent making Mandy remotely a character in mm -hmm. a movie named after her, which is very confusing. Or Nicolas Cage. I didn't feel yeah, like Nicolas he was Ca much of a character. No, yeah, I mean, he was the device he, for action. He didn't but he feel didn't. something yeah. whenever he sat down in that bathroom wearing the tiger shirt and just I wanted the screaming. <gasps> yeah. Like, gulp, that... gulp, gulp. <laughs> I, gulp, gulp, I, gulp. I do think that that scene was incredible. Like, I enjoyed I that tremendously, know. just watching Nick Cage go crazy. There's one scene that's better, and me and Dylan are thinking about it. Ooh, I want to talk on that scene really quick, though. But, so, I watched that scene, and my very first thought was that somebody gave him the script for the scene from Warrior. Whenever, uh... Tommy is with his dad, and he has his, like, relapse oh, in the hotel room. Oh, it yeah. felt like he got the script for all of that scene, and they just gave it to Nicolas Cage. They said, don't use any of the words, though. <laughs> so, just let her, out. Oh, drinking, cry, angry, and then he probably drags himself to bed and has a sentimental moment or something. I don't know, but it felt like they were just like, here's the emotions from this scene, do that. And then Nick Cage did that, and I was like, you know, actually... That was no. <laughs> that was the turning point for this movie though, because at that point, oh, basically, yeah, the, the notch just got turned all the way up. But my yeah. favorite scene easily was the kitchen living room scene where like he snuck in on that guy that was watching porn. Yeah, <laughs> and like, oh. and he just straight up 
killed him off in the neck, and then the blood splattered. Which, Ooh. by the way, didn't he hang a ton of dong? Uh, no, no, no. He had. Was that the sword? He had thing? like this sword thing. Yeah, I was wondering what that yeah. was too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. definitely I saw that. I noticed that too. Yeah, he just had like a huge blade that was sticking out of like, right where his uh, penis would be. Yeah, right. yeah, okay, right. I was so, wondering what that was too. I was confused. Which he got jammed into the floor and just kind of screwed himself over because yeah. it's no longer a weapon. Yeah. You're now stuck to the floor. <laughs> I remember thinking like, I'm watching a knife in the floor now, right? Like this yeah. is a blade in the floor. Like I, okay. whenever it first showed that, I was like, oh, this is about to be a real weird Weirdly. fight scene. Yeah. And then he immediately got stuck to the floor yep. and it's like oh okay <laughs> well that's not happening yeah. and then my favorite line of the whole movie comes up right as soon okay. as he finishes that what we got he turns back towards the kitchen and then he a uh, shotgun blast happens right mm -hmm. he tears off after the guy that's shooting the shotgun he's you ripped my shirt <laughs> no. and he said it two if not three if not four times yeah. in a row and he just i can't remember how he killed him but that was my favorite part of the whole movie yeah. because he did rip his shirt he did. at the very beginning. I think he just beginning. like snapped his neck or something. He did. Yeah, he ends up yeah. just snapping his neck. Which, Broke a guy's neck. At that just, point, yeah. you knew he was more well, than I mean, a logger. He crushes a skull later. Yes. And he was more than at a At that point, he's on a bunch of drugs, though. Yeah, I was about to yeah. say, he's Gregor Kuklain, <laughs> Kuklain, Kuklain, <laughs> a man of drugs at that I, point. Like, so. I fully expected that's what was going to happen, was <laughs> right. that he was going to push the eyeballs through. Yeah, I'm surprised yeah. he didn't. Like, the fact that he just crushes a skull. I thought he did that to the guy at the end. No, it's just like, it's always right on the side. Oh, he just smashed. He saw the eye Yeah. Yeah, was out. Smash, but he did not go for the eyes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which yeah. I thought was that's real. insane. How much strength that would take? Oh yeah. yeah. What I think is like actually even more weird about this movie, aside from like everything, is that they are surprisingly held back on nudity everywhere else. So they do it with the the church guy, mm -hmm. and then where do you feel like they restrain themselves? Well, so in the very first half of the movie, <laughs> in the first half of the movie, like Mandy comes out of the lake because she went to the lake at one point and they just show it like from her head up. And I was like, this seems like a time where you'd show a bunch of nudity and you didn't. Weird choice. Okay. I'm like, whatever. Maybe they're holding back on Mandy or whatever. And then she comes in in like anime nude form throughout the whole time. I'm like, oh, yeah. this is a weird yeah. medium to do that with. But this just feels like a movie that's also full. Like, if I think back and I'm like, yeah, there had to be a bunch of like tits and dong in this movie, right? And I'm just like, no, it's just the one dong, isn't it? <laughs> and well, the anime boobs. But um, yeah. So speaking of the anime, it's not really anime. It's it's more it's, American art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So animated boobs. It's right, definitely yeah. a reference to the heavy metal movies. Mm, yeah, it's heavy like, metal. This this is a very referential movie. Like the mm -hmm. person making this wanted to like call to a bunch of like heavy metal genre which right. the whole like uh what was that the frost something that the axe was themed after is one of the other oh, things frost uh, uh, celtic, uh celtic, celtic frost, frost. Celtic yeah frost. so they the axe that he makes is themed around yeah. their design for their band logo and mm -hmm. there's there's just a lot of weird references like that to D and D and heavy metal right. and like just very 80s stuff which the other thing about this movie it feels like it could have been shot in the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it has that feeling to it, which I guess is it's is a credit to its name a little bit, but I don't know. We'll see how I feel about it. Like, that's the, the thing I thought was so funny whenever I first started watching this movie. I was like, you know, I picked a new movie. Mm -hmm. You finally pick a, a new movie, movie <laughs> that just resembles And anything. somehow, I'm still in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. You can't get out, man. Yeah. You it was out. a blonde pick, though, so yeah. you didn't fair. know that. That's it's just fair. funny that it lined up to where it was. It happened Even like your, like, gut instinct is to go to a yeah. movie <laughs> that will secretly actually be an 80s movie yeah. in disguise, right? Yeah. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, there's... I feel like we'd be just talking about more action if we got into that part, and we talked about the chainsaw fight, so I'm, I'm content with that. <laughs> um, I would say let's do Fat Thin, Perfectly Fit, but, I mean, do we all universally agree this is a fat movie? I, don't know. I, I think it's kind of thin, and uh, I need about an hour to discuss as you know, to why. If you say that, they will make a prequel where they just, it's more Mandy, <laughs> and Nicholas Cage, no, here's what it'll do, it'll be Mandy on the second half, and Nicholas Cage, and showing him being, like, mm -hmm. some crazy, like, drug-killing person mm -hmm. in the first half, and he meets her, falls in love. Well, maybe, maybe that would explain a little bit as to why he's like how he is a little yeah. bit I guess. Mandy too finally talking about Mandy is the movie that... <laughs> but but yeah. it's just called we need to talk about Mandy right right <laughs> yes it's, it's fat like Kevin, but it's Mandy. fat across the board yeah this it's way too long universally but so normally there's a segment before scores where we have to do a question or skit thing or whatever but Nathan you got a that skit or a wait skit? a skit whatever. I would love to do a skit we're not well that's what are we skit. acting out let's do a little shop of horrors no I'm the dentist and if you downvoted that good for you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We don't know who you are. It doesn't help the channel at all. <laughs> but we recently saw on our Little Shop of Horrors, we have one down or dislike on that video. We don't know who you are or why you did it. And we're not going to follow after you like Taken. I just 
just let us know in this video. Hell, I don't know. <laughs> um, the thing I'm curious about is, can any of you all think of a scene with more just like manic, screaming, losing your mind kind of stuff than that bathroom scene? Because I can. I cannot think of anything like, that's more general, ridiculous like and over the top movie. than that thing was. Mm. Of any movie we've watched so far? Of just any movie. Like, do you know of anything where an actor's gone just that Just off over the, the top? Rails? I I think Crank, but it's not one specific scene. That's mm. like the feeling throughout the whole movie mm -hmm. is just nothing but, you know, manic drug use keeping going crazy. It's the plot of the film, but... Uh, I, when you were, like, talking about, like... Like, when you're talking like that, it kind of makes me think, like, actors overacting. And when I think of overacting, I always think about that that scene in her uh, um, marriage story. Okay, good. Where, I thought you were going to say that. Uh, that's good. Where Scarlett yeah. Johansson and uh, Adam Driver are just mm. just just yelling and just crying like, yeah. and screaming at each intense. other. Yeah, yeah that I, energy. I think that's, that's I've a good got call one. too. Yeah. Toby Maguire and Brothers in the Yeah! Oh, Come on! Yeah. You can't tell me that kitchen had a chance. Yeah. Yeah. You cannot okay. tell me. Ah. Sure. <laughs> he ripped that, that refrigerator handle just off. Yeah. yeah. The door didn't give much, that's true. but the, the handle came as off. As much as I hate to hear you talk about that movie, that's, that's a good one. That's a good call. That's feel, another good yeah, one. I feel like they gave Toby Maguire just free range. They were like, all right, listen. We know your your nature. We need you to just <laughs> lose it. Just be outside of your body for about five seconds. I've got nothing better than that. I'm just gonna go with that one then. Yeah. <laughs> like again, otherwise I just think crank in my there's, head. So there's that's like saliva I mean. coming out of his mouth. Is there something yeah. out of Foxcatcher I can like talk about? Just because like you hate, I hate hearing about brothers. No. You all hate hearing about Foxcatcher. Nothing happened in Foxcatcher. Well, nothing happened. The most eventful thing was a gunshot that yeah. I didn't care about. <laughs> Because the characters did nothing to build that up. But we're not here to talk about Fox Sketch. Yes, they talk. did! Not even a little. So. You're, you're too... You're not big brain enough. That's all I gotta say. No, we got two solid brains and one tiny brain trying to validate it. But we're talking Where about... Where does Crank. Nathan fit on that spectrum? I don't I remember was, what the score was I was actually, was like, medium warm on ha. fox catcher I it doesn't mean that he even liked it <laughs> that's yeah. fine it was it was fine we'll defer to scores later but that's but not what we're we're not talking about that we're talking about that but whatever i, I guess speaking of scores we're we're on the scores now now we are yeah, yeah. mason lead the way uh i don't feel like i talked enough about the chainsaw scene <sighs> i think that the chainsaw <laughs> scene <laughs> was <laughs> partially the second best part of this movie where he couldn't even get the thing started and he still <laughs> used it as a weapon yeah and not only that a, a weapon against another weapon that was 27 feet long. <laughs> um, well, I've never seen a chainsaw know, so long. Big, big mistake on that guy's on that guy's part. He had the long weapon. He should have not let Nick Cage Get close. close. Right. Like, oh, yeah. It there counted was, for nothing. There was a point. scene earlier in that movie where like Nick Cage had the longer weapon. I think it was this thing mm -hmm. against a smaller one, and he made it work. And then yeah. it was almost like the reverse where the other guy had... Anyways, the chainsaw reverse. scene was incredible. <laughs> one thing that I don't think mattered much was the tiger that whole room yeah, yeah. You know, we yeah, don't even just... discuss that whenever yeah. he meets uh, the the drug maker and do it all... now do yeah. it now between yeah. him and then the guy that was like living in that bus i think mm -hmm. or that trailer whatever wherever he got the sword from he, he well, was he was just there to be like you have a past man and these guys they're messed up man yeah, yeah he was just like yeah. you know i've heard on the cb that uh there's some real messed up bikers man yeah and that's all he was there for yeah, yeah he was just there to tell you that Actually, things aren't mystical. They aren't demons. They're just they're real bad people. On but drugs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I I like that that whole tiger scene. I just didn't feel like it fit in at all. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like it was a cool scene, but yeah, it's another one of those where it's just like this on its own is neat, but is it good for this movie? Does it serve I, this movie? Yeah. Nah. Mm -hmm. And I like how like I don't know what I said about mm -hmm. the frames earlier where like basically everything was just painted in red. At the very very end, Nick Cage's voice was like demonic and he had become basically those people because he had taken the drugs, I assume. Oh, that's mm -hmm. deep. But Yeah it's it is. Deep. But this also deep. It's Ouroboros it is. As, <laughs> as he's walking out after he killed the final dude, it evidently the uh, Mandy was a big painter which I barely even noticed, and her, oh, her scapes were That's like, like that. the one thing that, that they, they show give her, her as a character. character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other yeah. than her reading that she book. She read. Yeah. She liked to read. She is able to read and draw. But I did read up on this movie afterwards, and it, it did say that he was basically walking out of what looked like one of her paintings, mm -hmm. and like that's why they framed it You like mean that. the last scene of Midsummer? Yeah, basically. Right. Mm. 
Oh, oh, that's yeah. a, it is the same big old, same triangle. That's yeah. a pretty shot. Yeah. 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 So, Anyways, yeah. Sorry. Y- y- I was wondering if you're also going to mention the end when he's driving in the car and like looking towards the passenger seat. Oh, yeah. And that was like, my favorite shot. Of that the was movie. such the shot was a weird t- look. Like I it can... was so red, <laughs> and his eyes were so white, and his teeth were so, so white. Mm-hmm. I watched this, I think, before you three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As soon as I watched it, that image haunted me. But I, I went and on the Google Images, <laughs> saved it. And I almost sent it in the messenger, but I was like, I'm going to hold back. (laughs) Sent it to Price as he was watching it, and I'm glad that I can finally delete it, because I do not want to see that image. I was like, what the heck are you, what is happening here? It is one of the scariest out of context it's pictures a really I've ever creepy seen. creepy photo. <laughs> With all that being said, this movie is fucking trash. Overall, <laughs> it's a five and a half, just because I did enjoy basically everything that happened in the second half. It's Nick Cage's bottom five performance. I did like the bathroom scene. I liked you ripped my shirt. <laughs> I liked the chainsaw. I liked him covered in blood. Just not enough. Where does Con Air li- rank on that list? Uh, probably top three. Woo! <laughs> Top three easily. So good. Yeah, I've never seen Conair. It's so good. I'll pick it. Eight. It's not. <laughs> My word. If we can create, create a Nick Cage one. We're not doing. No, no, we're not. <laughs> Is he no, in? No, we're not. So we'll do a DiCaprio month, like we're the best actors of all time. That's and you guys' choice. Freaking Nick Cage. That's you guys' choice. I would pick Left Behind because I just want to see how that movie goes, and I heard it's terrible. But uh, the Ghost Rider. Yeah. Mm. Uh, hey, well, that's a Disney movie. <laughs> that's true. Technically true. Yeah. But yeah. Um. Oh my God. How do I rate this movie? Jesus. All right. So, I only like the second half, and I only like parts of the second half. So it starts at a five and works its way down. So I feel like. I feel like four and a half feels right. Yeah, I'm actually with Mason. On, you went five and a half. I went five and a half. Yeah, I'm yeah. only one point less than Mason on this one. So yes, while the cinematography at first is like pretty interesting and kind of fun. Yeah. When you realize that point. it's not used to ramp up anything other than give you the idea of what things are and it's the whole movie is that then it takes away from what makes it special so that like started as a strength and then immediately became a weakness as the time went on the first half of the movie is way too long to just get nicholas cage to the second half of the movie and i'm like all right we gotta cut 50 minutes off the first half well <laughs> as much as they fleshed out mandy like it's totally pointless <laughs> the first half is totally ridiculous so it starts at a five just because it's half a movie to me from there the second half I won't lie, it's also bad, but I had some fun with some yeah, of the Yeah, you, you enjoy like, it a little bit. I, like, by the time we get to the second half, because the first half is so like, fuck me, just get me somewhere. <laughs> and then you're like, that's, that's a really fucking long chainsaw. <laughs> like, I remember being, bro, that tiger, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I'm like, that tiger gonna do anything? <laughs> No, it's just, why is it in a painting landscape? What the fuck is going on with this movie? <laughs> like, you thought you had self had taken those when, drugs? By the second half, I'm like, I think I figured it out. And then it gives you those moments where you don't. And I'm like, it's not better for this. It's just worse. It's just being confusing for the sake of being confusing and artistic. So, yeah, like, it's going to sit at a good four and a half. Like, and it's it's bad. It's really bad. <laughs> like, it's bad. <laughs> put that disclaimer at the beginning. But there's some fun parts there in it. There are. And we've talked about those ones at length, so you can just go back to the earlier parts of that. But, yeah, it's a bad movie with some fun parts, and that's about as much as I like, credit it as I can give it. I have a question real quick. Uh-huh. Yeah, go for it. Do you think... Let's see. So this movie is two hours... Let's say that all the chaos started right at the halfway point. Yeah. Do you think that the average Joe could start this movie... 40 minutes in and enjoy it. Probably. Yeah. No, you are not losing a little mm-hmm. bit of build up, maybe a Barely. little bit of introduction, but do you think it would still work? Yeah. I think yeah. It, I I'm think not talking rearranging it. I'm mm-hmm. saying they come in as you're watching <laughs> at 40 it minute at 40 mark. minutes. <laughs> yeah. And then they, like they come in when they see minutes. Mandy get caught on fire. If anything, it makes no, more it's, sense. It's no, it's a little that. bit before. Oh, before yeah, that. It's like right at the kidnapping. Scene. Yeah, you don't yeah. want to start in the action. I mean, you need a little bit. I, of you know, I hundred percent think that that makes this movie significantly yeah, better. I think so. Yeah. Because I'll well, I'll save it for my score. But you I have opinions that want. basically. No, he's the one host on that. Okay. The, he's uh, the last uh, one on it. I mean, I can do it. That's fine. Go for it. I will point out though. I was gonna put this movie at a four, but then I remembered it hung dong, so go for four point five. You, um, you always get a half point yeah. for me. Movie. So, <laughs> does this movie have a lot of flaws? Yes. Does it overstay its wel- welcome? Tremendously. Yes. <laughs> there it never are even so got many scenes that I think were funny or cool or just I enjoyed the cinematography. Um, and yeah, I do think if you just like if I ever rewatch this movie, 
I, I am generally very opposed to the idea of fast-forwarding through movies for any reason. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a weird thing to do. I will do that with this movie mm-hmm. because there will be scenes that I'm just like, I just want to see that scene. Like, I just want to see Nick Cage lose his mind in the bathroom. That's <laughs> hilarious, and I love that scene. So for me, I mean, it's not a great movie, but I'm going to land at a six for it. Because Hell yeah. I, just, I think it's solid uh, yeah. for the scenes that it has. Um, but yeah, I'll be using that fast forward if I ever watch this thing again. <laughs> well, luckily they saved the least for last. And we always do. With always you. do. With that, yeah. I did not enjoy this movie. I didn't enjoy like one second of it besides like I enjoyed that shot of Nicolas Cage there at the end. I thought that was the one time that like <laughs> like the shot out. like like the cinematography and everything like came together in that one moment. Like I'm pretty sure the score even cut out at that point and like Probably. just showed him. And I thought that was really neat because that's like it felt like the one time in the movie where like they had like these really like like these cinematography kind of shots, like the shots that were kind of like overarching, like these like ones that were there for your like viewing, like beautiful. And then they had the ones where it was just like action. And man, those ones were like, they like want you to see how like beautiful everything is. I got really sick of the first time I was like, this is pretty neat. Like I'm glad they chose something different. And then they did it the entire movie. It lasted forever. This is such a long movie. It is so fat. The action just gets gratuitous for me. Like, like I can still remember, like the, when I think of like gratuity in a movie, I am think like I'm thinking of Silent Hill is my g- best example of Whoa. gratuitousness. Whoa! Is, is, Whoa! <laughs> Tasteful. The part where like the you barbed gotta... wire goes in the girl, like that's the part I'm talking well, about. Woman, that, first of all, or or the lady <laughs> having her flesh just twisted and ripped off of her body. See that part I don't really remember as much for some reason. I, yeah, I was. We that's always remember yeah, that. Pyramid head picks the yeah, girl picks up, up and just the, rips oh, her yeah. flesh off and throws it. Yeah, at the throws door. at the church and the, I always that, think of pepperoni. But for some anyway. reason, <laughs> that's yeah. not the part I remember. I think of that like the girl with oh, the, the barbed wire and everything. It's a pretty memorable. But oh yeah, but like I feel like like as much as I did not enjoy that, that gratuity was done well because it was like that one moment to really highlight how vicious this is mm-hmm. and this is just the whole half of the last half of this movie is just that going on the entire time i just got exhausted kind of like i did watching mad max the mm-hmm. score did nothing for me it's just like that inception kind of sound that you hear the entire mm-hmm. time just okay. like the wah 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 and i couldn't see a lot of what was going on because like they just used fog the entire movie no matter where they were like everything seemed foggy with lights having to cut through it. They spent good money on that fog machine. Mm-hmm. They, they used every minute of it. Dude. They used every single bit of it. Somebody got two of them. Yeah. And they spent a lot of their budget on Nicolas Cage, and they used every ounce of him that they could get as well. Yeah. And I will never rewatch this movie. I will never recommend it to anyone. I will always think this is a bad movie. So nine out of ten. I'm going <laughs> going with a two on this. Okay. Um, because okay. the length, like I don't like the movie already, and then when it wastes my time in such quantities. Going down to a two for me. Is definitely. it is it worth giving it a three just because we know we hit three, four, five, six? <laughs> you know what? All right. Ah, <laughs> what a sound. Him. What All right. a pitch. And, fair enough. And to be fair, to be fair, if you are the director of this movie and you're right, you put all of your money in a Nick Cage. Do you not get every penny you put into Nick Cage's paycheck so for this movie? So, here's the point. interesting thing. Nick Cage wasn't supposed to be the main character. <laughs> yeah, okay. What? Whenever, whenever he was pitched to do this movie mm-hmm. he they wanted him to be the leader of the jesus freak cult hmm. that would have been and cool. every would, time hmm. he talked to the director he's like no i want to be like i, I want to be the main people. character yeah um and finally they got like finally the director's just like okay we'll do yeah. it this way <laughs> what happened <laughs> to the other actor uh, just I, don't, I don't know who the other actor was but yeah. uh <sighs> part of the thing was that he was too old to be the main character they wanted a younger person to be I mean, the main nick, character nick looking kind of old in this movie i mean mm-hmm. i don't mean to have but yeah so uh it actually wasn't even supposed to be him <laughs> leading this movie <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> Like, well, if I'm here, I want to be the main, the yeah. main star. <laughs> well, to be fair, the main star has the most fun. Like, in the imagine movie. being yeah. Nick Cage reading this movie and being like, nah, I want to, I want to be the murder machine. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I want to do. I don't want to be the guy that uh, is offering a BJ he's, to the lead yeah. character he's like, at nah. the end of the movie. He's like, whose dick do I gotta suck to get the other role? Because <laughs> <laughs> if I'm gonna do this movie, he's like, I'd... oh, that's great. We're gonna write that in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, that's actually a great. So it's like, whose dick do I have to suck? T- to get my dick sucked. Yes, that's the trick. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, we're at the end of a cycle, are we? 
Oh. No, this is the, the beginning, beginning of the cycle. No, I couldn't no, remember. No. This, is the, the, this is the this leader right yeah. here. Yeah, yeah it's he's like, the I'm one kicking it off. That's why I was yeah. saying we should do a Nick Cage month. But, no, you know. yeah, no. There's, there's still a there's still an opportunity. <laughs> Got <laughs> vetoed handily on that. If someone one. else even wants to take Conair, that's fine. I'll, I'll find another one. <laughs> well, you're welcome you can to be pick, left behind. You're welcome to pick Conair if you would like, but I am picking uh, something that is the polar opposite yeah. of this movie, <laughs> and going with our first talk about any Disney movie, and that is Emperor's New Groove. Wait, that's false. Mm. There's probably another one. Yeah. Have we haven't talked about any Disney movies. I don't. I no. feel like no, but you, we might be wrong. We might be wrong. Maybe. 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 I have to double check. We'll see. Not, yeah. I, feel I don't like know. know. We'll Doesn't matter. But I know Emperor's New Groove, and I remember that movie being like shorter. So you're welcome, everybody. At least we won't have to waste two hours on uh, whatever you're having. You call to watch. it wasting. <laughs> <laughs> I say learning new experiences. Now I know yeah, how to blacksmith. I didn't know Jigsaw's could be that long. That's true. I learned. That's true. That's also true. <laughs> the point is we're cutting down the biggest trees that have been here since the, I don't know, dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe that's what that guy was using it for. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, if you want to see Chainsaws chop up brontosauruses, I guess, then... I don't know. Don't watch that movie for it. It doesn't have it, but there's a really long chainsaw. Anyway, guys, that's our show. Uh, thank you for tuning in to FM Movie Podcast. You can catch us here at FM Movie Podcast where you're already at. And if you thought that this was fun and engaging, or if you just enjoy our pain from watching this movie, make sure to subscribe to the channel because we keep doing it to ourselves. There will be more.